All right, today I'm going to talk you through something that a lot of people, myself included, struggle with. And that is when they're color mixing, getting enough paint and water into whatever they're doing, they're mixing in. So you might be mixing your colors in a tray like this, like a plastic round palette. This one was about a dollar. Um, and so you could be mixing in the little wells there like that. Um, or you might be using the lid of a palette like this. This is from my kits. These come in my kits and they all have a lid like this that you can mix in the little dishes there as well. Or you might be mixing on a ceramic palette such as this one that I have, um, or even a folding palette. These can, you can get these in, uh, like they're plastic or this one's metal and they have little dishes as well that you can be mixing in. So no matter what, um, no matter what sort of vessel you were using for your color mixing, this is gonna be really helpful. Um, not sure if I mentioned it before with my ceramic palette, but you could also just use a plate. So I'm gonna move some of these things aside and show you how, first I might show you the, um, the reason it can be sort of difficult. So for example, if I wanted to be mixing a, a, an orange or something, so I would need red and yellow for that. So if I wanted to mix a big quantity of orange, I would need to get a lot of red into my palette. And I would need to grab some more water every time that it started to run out from my warm colors jar and like get it over here and keep transporting it back and forth, right? And then keep adding more water, particularly if I wanted it to be like a diluted color. Um, and then I would obviously be adding in yellow as well, which I didn't plan this. <laughs> Orange just came to the top of my head. All right, so here's a yellow that we might use. And then I would activate that by adding the water to the paint to activate it and grabbing it and adding it like that. Now I'm rushing a little bit, so I would probably be cleaning my brush in between. Okay, so you can see that that's kind of time consuming, a lot of back and forth, particularly if I wanted a large amount of paint. So another option to do this is simply just get a bigger brush. So for example, this was a size two brush. So you might be painting some small flowers with a size two brush. You don't have to use the brush that you're painting with to do the color mixing. In fact, this is one of my fancy brushes. It was like 60 bucks. So I generally don't use it for color mixing. So I might use a large brush that can hold more water in the bristles to transport the water and the paint. And it's just much quicker to do it that way. So I get plenty of paint and plenty of water on my brush. And it just is a lot quicker to get that puddle happening. And I will obviously rinse the brush and grab it like that and so on. And this is just a really random color that I've mixed, by the way. So that's one option is to just simply get a much bigger brush. And it's just going to make that heaps quicker because you can store more water and paint in that brush. I've got paint on my fingers now. Another option, if it's moving the water itself that is time consuming because you want it to be really diluted is to use a little eyedropper. This was from a baby Panadol. Uh, box from when Freddie was little. So just use that to transport the water. You suck up that water, whether it be from a warm colors jar or cool colors jar, depending what sort of color you're mixing and just drip it in like that. And that's another, another option or like a little um, syringe from a baby Panadol bottle or something like that. And that way you end up with a huge puddle. This is lovely and diluted if that was what I was going to be using um, and it's just it really speeds up the process. So I hope you found that really really helpful uh, and I'd love to know your thoughts and if you have any questions about other things like that um, feel free to ask.